are we moving from now a pandemic to an endemic? And if so, what does that mean? The big difference is in an endemic situation, you have disease threats that are still threats to uh, health and um, safety of, of your residents, but they're here pretty much to stay. We know we're going to have COVID here um, for a long time, and it'll it will come back as many of these other respiratory diseases do, sometimes with minor changes, sometimes with more significant changes. Um, but we we are at a point where the overall risk level and landscape has changed. We have vaccines that target this, and most of our residents have been vaccinated at this point. It's causing far fewer serious illnesses than it has in the past. But it is still a threat, as the WHO mentions, and we're going to continue to work and, and use resources to try to reduce those serious illnesses and those deaths. And how do we mitigate those deaths? Well, I think an important thing is for people to take protective actions, such as being vaccinated, um, making sure that they're helping to reduce the spread, especially to uh, high-risk individuals, those who are older, where their immune systems are not as robust, those who are immunocompromised. Even if you don't have COVID, if you're symptomatic, you should try to avoid high-risk individuals. You should wear masks when you're around people, because we know we can. We know these are effective in helping to reduce the spread. And we do ask our residents, we know that life continues on. We don't want to worry about everything every day, but we do ask they pay some attention to public health reports about threats. We'll let the public know when the threat has changed relative to COVID, relative to other disease. Is the threat going up? Is it affecting certain populations? So how will the lifting of the U.S. public health emergency affect people in Montgomery County? Is it does change where some of the funding comes from. And for states and uh, local governments, it can change what is reimbursable from FEMA. But there are a lot of resources that are still being provided by the federal government um, to reduce costs to the, the average person. There is a gradual shift to the greater privatization of these resources, uh, but our federal and state partners have been working with localities that are you know very concerned about all of our citizens. There are programs in place to, uh, again, help ensure there's some access to individuals who don't have the means um, to pay out of pocket. So for right now, there won't be a huge um, impact to the residents of Montgomery County. In fact, uh, we'll still be, uh, Health and Human Services will still be offering free vaccination clinics um, up through the end of June. Uh, we have grant funds to enable us to do this through the state, um, and we're, we're still going to be distributing rapid test kits out through our libraries for free to the population because we think that's, again, a, an important protective measure. I do think that there has been a diminished fear of COVID. And to be fair, there are fewer people having severe illness and there's fewer deaths. But we do want to stress that they're still unfortunately happening way too frequently. And um, particularly, again, I keep mentioning the people who are at greater risk. That's where our concern is. We continue to remind the public, especially when transmissions go up, those risks to uh, individuals who are immunocompromised and who are elderly, they increase when transmissions go up. So we we want to publicize that. We want people to act on it. Um, and we want people to get those boosters as recommended. Our immune systems don't stay the same over time. And so it's important to go get that shot to try to protect you and the people around you.